Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are bonded to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a common or main minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All of you are welcome to church service tomorrow morning, by the way. <laughs> I'd like to see a full house like we have right now. I know that God is glad because he, uh, he shed tears of happiness last night. And at 8.30 this morning, the clouds parted and the sun shone. So I know he's smiling on us too today. Uh, I'd like to extend a, uh, uh, by the way, thank you very much for scooting over and being friendly with your neighbor. Because we, we succeeded in getting everybody in the <laughs> Uh, I'd like to extend a uh, welcome from St. Andrew Lutheran Church to the bishop and his court. And uh, uh, we're looking forward to an inspirational service, by the way. I'd like to also thank uh, our visitors from the south, from, uh, from the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, could you raise your hands if you're there? Well, they found out that we were going to have a reception following that. <laughs> So we are having a reception immediately following the service today. And uh, you, you all are welcome to come and enjoy and uh, meet and talk to the bishop. And, and uh, who, uh, at that time will be our new pastor. Uh, he's just ranting to us right now. Uh, I want to also remind you that uh, there is services tomorrow here at uh, St. Andrew Lutheran Church at uh, 8 o'clock, 9.30 and, and 11 o'clock. And we'll be giving a farewell to a fine per person who has been with us for a couple months, uh, uh, Pastor Richard Zuber. And uh, so come and join us and stop that one off. Okay. Thank you. To Pastor Richard Zuber and come and be with him and, and say a, a hail and farewell to him. He's done a wonderful job of being with us during the, this interim time between the time of... Uh, of uh, uh, Pastor David uh, uh, retiring and uh, Randy coming to us. So we thank you again for, for that, uh, uh, Pastor Zuber. Uh, oh, I have one other thing. God is great. All the time. All the time. God is great. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty and merciful God, you built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. And you instituted the office of the ministry of word and sacrament so that the apostolic and prophetic work might continue throughout the ages. Grant that Randy, now to be ordained, may carry out his ministry faithfully in the power of your spirit through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> A reading from Isaiah. God created the heavens and stretches them up. The Lord spreads out the earth with everything that grows on it. He gives breath to his to its people. He gives life to those who walk on it. He says to his servant, I, the Lord, have chosen you to do what is right. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you safe. You will put into effect my covenant with the people of Israel, and you will be a light for the Gentiles. You will open eyes that can't see. You will set prisoners free. Those who sit in darkness will come out of their cells. I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not let any other God share my glory. I will not let statues of God share my praise. What I said would happen has taken place. Now I announce new things to you. Before they even begin to happen, I announce them to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 through 5. I give you a command in the sight of God and Jesus Christ. Christ will judge the living and the dead because he and his kingdom are coming. Here is the command I give you. Preach the word. Be ready to serve God in good times and bad. Correct people's mistakes. Warn them. Encourage them with words of hope. Be very patient as you do these things. Teach them carefully. The time will come when people won't put up with true teaching. Instead, they will try to satisfy their own desires. They will gather a large number of teachers around them. The teachers will say what the people want to hear. The people will turn their ears away from the truth. They will turn story to stories that aren't true. But I want you to keep your head no matter what happens. Don't give up when times are hard. Work to spread the good news. Do everything God has given you to do. The word of the Lord. Jesus took a little child 
and had the child stand among them. Then he took the child in his arms. He said to them, Anyone who welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me also welcomes the one who sent me. Teacher, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name. We told him to stop because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said. For no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. Anyone who is not against us is for us. What I'm about to tell you is true. Suppose someone gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah. That person will certainly not go without a reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was talking yesterday with uh, with uh, former Bishop uh, Schaefer, and he said that every time he had a, to be in an ordination, he he always kind of like at the beginning he would cry because it's something so special to all of us. Congratulations, man. You're a huge support. You. Before I begin the sermon, I want to bring you a greetings and uh, dear beloved sisters and brothers from St. Andrew and other congregations that I'm here to support uh, St. Andrew and the new ordained pastor, Randy. Um, I want to bring you greetings from the rest of the other community, the network of the Florida Bahama Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, which we are about 180 congregations here in, in, uh, in Florida, and one in Bahamas, in one. <laughs> and they told me that that doesn't apply for me to move the office to the Bahamas. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> But anyway, I want to bring you greetings from them. And then we have many other ministries, including federal chaplaincy. We have several chaplains in the military. And I, we have uh, health care chaplains. We have Lutheran outdoor ministries. We have Lutheran campus ministries. We have retirement villages and, and more. And we're all together part of this network. And thank you for being part of that network. We are together. Although sometimes we don't always come together, but we each one are connected one way or another. And this is very special. Uh, and I want to thank you. And even right here, we have several clergy and, and uh, rascal leaders and, and deacons that have come from different places to, to, to support. And that's just a sign of, uh, of the ministry that we do. So on behalf of all of that and the staff of the, the uh, Florida Bahama Synod, I bring you greetings. And uh, usually my wife comes and I, I, I just say, I don't have to bring you greetings from my wife because she's right here with me, but she's not with me today. She preferred to go see our brand new granddaughter. <laughs> so she's in Houston, Texas with my son and, and, and the family receiving our fourth grandchild. So I'll be going next week over there and see that little baby. So I'm looking forward to that. Grace and peace are yours from God our Father and from His Son Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This passage of the Gospel, also known as uh, Who's the Greatest, uh, reminded me of, uh, remember, uh, who used to say that he was the greatest, uh, Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali, he said, the greatest, one of the greatest, you know. Uh, and to be the most important, the greatest in the world is something that people are always looking, especially when they're in, in competition sports, they want to know who's the champion, who's the most wonderful person in the world, and then we have categories and all that kind of stuff. And not to mention in the political arena, also, we have that too, you know, not only in this country. Every country is the same thing. Who's the strongest? Who's the most important? Who's the, who's the greatest, etc.? We always have that. 
somewhat no surprising that in Jesus and his group, they had the same discussion. Now, this is not the first time they had been discussing this, and before it was like, oh, you know, he got upset and all that. This time when, again, Jesus, they were arguing about the same thing, Jesus, what were you arguing on the way? It was like, silence. You want to say anything about it. But they still were thinking about who was more important. Who was going to be in the gang, those of you that have been in the, in the military, those who, who's the ones that are going to get more ranks? Getting up there. Still. Now the interesting thing, my dear siblings, is that Jesus didn't scold them. He didn't say, are you kidding? You don't dare do those things. Not on my watch. Nope. So, we live in a society that is very individualistic, that we encourage everyone, hey, you can do it, you, you, you can do it, you're special, you have gifts, or whatever. We try to always empower people. And as ministers, we do that too. We try to empower folks to be disciples of Christ, right? It's part of what we do. So part of it is that you can, so we're important. So Jesus wasn't saying that, you know, you shouldn't be doing this. No, but I think he just throws a different twist. You are thinking about being important. So I'm going to tell you, he says, Jesus, I'm going to tell you my look on this. If anyone, it says here, wants to be first, must be the, must be the very last. They must be the servant of everyone. And I know that uh, many folks right here in this room have been in the military. And every time we see somebody that has been in the military, what do we say? Thank you for your service. Gosh. So those of you that have been in the military know that that has kept you going. That was a sense of pride. I am serving my country. Whether I agree or not with the decisions made in Congress or whatever, I'm serving my country. So sometimes we think about what does it mean? How can we evaluate the capacity of importance in our life? So Jesus almost brings this, like, you know, it's, I think it's more outside of yourselves. It's more being objective rather than inside and looking at how I am. I come from a society in Latin America where the community is more important than the individual. If it's important for the community, for the family, then it's important. If it's important to you, eh, you're being a little bit selfish. And I'm going to tell you, in some way, we baby boomers are like that. We have been so faithful and loyal, and we were looking for the the, 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 the well-being of of the of the institution that, or the organization that we were part of. But then the millennials, you know, come and say, no, I'm, I'm with whoever gives me more, it pays me more. You know, so it used to be that you would look at someone and you see that in three years they had six jobs and you're like, oh my goodness, this person is unstable. We're not going to have it. Nowadays you look at the millennials and you see they got six jobs and they were going like, boom, 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 up. And then, oh, they were looking for something. They were really looking for that way. So they're serving, however, because of their service, they can walk up the ladder. Jesus did not scold them for thinking about importance. But he said, have it right. <coughs> the most important thing is how we serve. 
and who we serve. Then he brought a child. Look at the child. That one right there. We got one right here. That's the most important person in there. Sorry, folks. Take it personal. That's what Jesus said. And it reminds me now that we're talking about ordination. I, I can almost think about Peter when uh, you know he was in that uh, uh, in the, the fish. They couldn't fish him. They had the, the, the miraculously a catch, you know, a big fishing group that they had in, in in the beach, and he was giving them fish sandwiches, and he was there waiting for them. And then they went for a walk, and tells Peter, "Do you love me?" Remember that? And then he said, "Yes, Lord, you know." First time, "Yes, Lord, you know that I love you." What did Jesus say? Feed. Feed my what? Feed my land. First time he said, feed my lambs. The little ones. Then the second time when he had them again, then he said, feed my sheep. And last time, tend my sheep. But first, little ones. And I have to say, now I'm bringing it home to church. As a church in general, as Christianity, although we, have, we know that we're having maybe a church crisis here in, in the United States, but Christianity is booming all over the world. In spite of our crisis here in the United States, it's growing all over the world, in India, in Africa, even in Latin America, it's just growing. But we have failed Jesus because we have done a lot of damage to the little ones in general. <coughs> and I'm not just talking about what has happened in, within the Baptists or Roman Catholics or, or any, any denomination. We have had leaders that have come in and have done it for the wrong reason and have damaged children. And we have failed Jesus. Most important thing. Do it for the right thing. Do it because you really want to serve. Today we're going to be giving stoles to Randy. Very powerful stoles. And we know that they represent like that towel that Jesus wrapped around when he washed the, the disciples' feet. It's a sign of what? Service. Serve. He said, nope, this is the most important thing I need to serve. And you need to be like a child. Because Peter said, no, no, you're not going to love Be quiet. I'm going to have to do it. So my dear friends that are here at St. Andrews, now you're going to have Randy, hopefully for a long time, because he's young. <laughs> I know for some of you that are used to serving in the church there are doers you're going to say yeah we're going to now with Randy we're going we're gonna to have a lot of stuff to do in this church and, and in the community we're going to do stuff it's going to be hard and then, you know, you go for the hard part. But you know what? I'm telling you, no, that's not the hard part. The hard part is let Randy wash your feet now. <coughs> Be served. That's hard. And Randy is the same way. The congregation also serves the pastor. When we're talking about who's most important, that comes across all the time when we have the whole issues about the counsel of the pastor. Who's got finally the last word in the congregation? The counsel or the pastor? Who's the most important one? I'm here to tell you, as your bishop, both. This is a shared responsibility and shared authority. 
walk together, serve each other in love. Serve each other. That's what Jesus wants us to do. It doesn't matter how we think. It doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, it's good that we have different opinions on many things because in, 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 in the variety is where we have richness. It's wonderful that we think differently on ethical issues and moral issues and, and, and political issues. That's fine, but here together with the children of God and we serve one another. 